Welcome to a technical overview of TailF Systems Network Control Systems product, or NCS, presented by our Director of Product Strategy, Stefan Valin. Let's look at the network control system as a black box. What it provides northbound is one single pane of glass for all the services you have in the network on all the devices from different vendors in the network. So rather than manipulating individual devices, reconfigure devices, provide services, you have one single point where you create services, modify services, provision devices. What's very important is that it's a multi-vendor product and it's a multi-service product. So rather than having different solutions for different services like a firewall manager, a policy manager, one VPN manager, NCS can support any kind of service, layer two to level seven within one single system. How it actually does this is by having a true representation of the network and the services within the network in the database. So we represent the device configurations as well as the service configurations. And the database is not a passive database where you store sort of a read-only copy. It's an active database where you can manipulate your services and manipulate the devices. How does that work really? It's centered around the database where you have device models for representing the configurable items on a device. So if these represent devices from different vendors, whatever you can configure, whatever you can read, that's represented by the device models and that's fine-grained represented in the database. So it's fine-grained and deep configuration representation there. As a user, you can modify any piece of information in the database and commit it to the network. In the same way, we represent services. So be it VPN services, layer two, layer three, firewall rules, we have a representation of the services as an external service model. We can feed it to the NCS system and suddenly NCS can provide those services over APIs and, and user interfaces. This is extremely important that it's model driven. Because if, it, if it's not model driven, you buy stovepipe hardwired solutions or you send a lot of programmers to implement new services or implement new devices. By me being model driven, you can specify your VPN service in a data model, load it to NCS and suddenly NCS can understand what it means. It can render all the northbound interfaces that are required. The same way for adapters. We all know about the terrible adapter pain. We need to wait six months for an adapter. We need to pay huge amounts for the adapters to support the latest device. Since we have a declarative data model for the device, it's a matter of days to support a new device. And again, the whole system is auto-rendered from that new device. So plugging new devices, plugging new service, is a matter of specifying the model and the system will be rendered from those. The database as such, which I talked about briefly earlier on, is a perfect copy of the network configuration. And there's a danger of saying copy. It sounds like we're copying the configuration data into the database and it's a read-only representation. That's what typical network configuration and change management products do. They read a copy of the config and they store it as a read-only copy in a database. It's in, in contrast with NCS. It's a database where you can write the config and it's fine-grained so you can manipulate any piece of the database and it's pushed to the devices. So it's always in perfect sync with the network. How can we be in perfect sync? Well, it's a transactional engine. Um, and when I say transactions, I don't only talk about the database, I actually include the network. So whenever we do a change, the database and the network lives in the same transaction. Although the devices might not support transactions natively, like simple CLIs where the, there is no rollback mechanism, NCS can do a transaction across different vendors. It can be Cisco's, Juniper's, F5's, A10, uh, if some of those guys fail, NCS will automatically roll back. So your network is always in a consistent state, always in sync with the database. This is a key component that makes the, the solution fly. What kind of APIs and UIs do we have? Firstly, user interfaces. 
Um, network engineers are skilled. They know their network. They know how to provision services in the network. And um, sometimes if you give them just a magic OK button, they, they don't trust you. They are extremely professional by using CLIs. What's interesting with NCS is one of the user interfaces we provide is actually a network-wide service aware CLI. So northbound of NCS, you can pick. Do you like a Juniper style CLI or a CLI from, from Cisco? You can pick either of them. And you can use the CLI from NCS. And that CLI is not the cut-through CLI. It's actually talking to the database. So you're running a CLI to manipulate and view services, manipulate and view device configs, and then that's pushed as a transaction to the network. Also, we provide an auto-rendered web UI. Programmatic APIs, we have REST APIs, Java, JavaScript APIs, so we can hook NCS into systems like order management systems or other OSS, BSS applications. How is NCS typically used? Let's look at a specific use case. Um, a typical data center, how does it work? Well, there's a mix of different vendors in the network. What's the current state of affairs when you look at configuration management? Most customers we come to, and, and the majority of, of how customers work today, is that a lot of engineers, they use the native CLI towards the different vendors. Uh, they have a central configuration file backup. So this is just a read-only database where they pull the configs, store it into a backup system. So in case of failure, they can just push back a static config. They typically have hundreds or thousands of, of Perl scripts that do CLI screen scraping to, to establish service in, in the network. This doesn't scale. When you build new data centers, you need to hire more people. The chaotic Perl scripts just grow and grow and hard to maintain. So one of our customers, what happened there is that remove the Perl scripts, remove the passive read-only database, keep the engineers but in, have NCS represent all the Perl scripts with automated device provisioning, service provisioning, that's represented rather than in the NCS database. And the network engineers have a power tool, so they can use the CLI to provision the services, they can use the web UI, and they can also hook the system into the upper management systems. So they could grow the network, keeping the staff, and be much more dynamic in how services are provisioned. Moving into a more architectural discussion, what are the main functional blocks of, of NCS? We talked quite a lot of the, of the database so far. It's a purpose, special purpose database. It's domain specific. Uh, it supports, for example, conf configuration in a hierarchical manner. Configuration data is hierarchical, therefore the database is hierarchical. The database supports versions, meaning you have different versions of the same device in the network. That's natively known by the database. So you can have different versions at the same time. The database knows which versions and which part of the configuration tree that is valid for, for the different versions. It's totally embedded, so meaning whenever you plug a new device, whenever you plug a new service, the database schema is updated. So no hands operation, you don't need to go to your DB admin to add new schemas to the database. It's totally embedded, managed automatically. At the core of the product is the device manager and the service manager. As I talked about previously, it's driven by device models and service models. And this is extremely important because management systems have a big problem on, on feature lag when it comes to introducing new devices or new services. It typically requires a huge amount of programming. NCS is rendered from device data models and service models. So introducing services, typically one or two weeks. The same with new devices, because you specify a formal data model in the Yang data modeling language. Yang is a data modeling language standardized by ITF, RFC 6020, sort of the follow-up of SMMP MIBS, a new, modern, semantic, rich data modeling language, which renders the whole solution. That's the per service manager manages services, the device manager manages the transactions and, and the config of the devices. A crucial component of any kind of service activation solution is to map. Here I have my layer 2 VPN, what's the corresponding configuration on the device? That's a mapping exercise. These attributes of my VPN, the SVLAN, the interfaces, what kind of Cisco config does it result in? What kind of Juniper device config does it result in? Uh, we have key features to actually support that. 
The most important thing is what we call the fast map algorithm. What fast map gives you is that in order to express this mapping, you only have to specify how the service is created. You do a definition of how do I create a service, what is the resulting device config for recreation. Later on, if someone changes a service, adds a leg to a VPN, changes the SVLAN of a layer 2 tunnel, NCS will actually automatically derive all the changes. Typically in other products, you have to program and implement every possible change that is automatically rendered by NCS. The actual mapping then, you can express it in templates. That's taking a service model and doing a template for the device config. That's how network engineers think. So it's a perfect tool for network engineers because typically currently you have a template. This is the CLI snippet for a VPN for that vendor. Here's a CLI snippet for a VPN for that vendor. That's actually what you do as templates. And then you just have variables in template that grabs data from the service model. Perfect fit with network engineering brains. If you're a programmer, you can do it in Java, called mapping logic here. It's also sometimes used for more complex scenarios where you do need to do callouts to PCA engines or inventory systems, etc. Then you can have full freedom to do it in the mapping logic. What's important though in the mapping logic is as a programmer, you don't see CLIs, you don't see SNMP object identifiers, you work with data structures from the database. It's as defined by the data models. Uh, there's a core engine which deals with transactions, validations, um, authentication, auditing, logging, rollbacks, all the core mechanisms of a management system that deals with configuration management. Southbound, we have a lot of tools. Um, the, the key thing here is that rather than programming adapters, we render the southbound commands from the device models. For netconf devices, it's totally rendered from the corresponding Yang data models. For SNMP devices, we do the same by compiling the MIBs. A unique thing in NCS is the support for CLI devices. As you know, normally speaking to CLI devices requires a lot of programming. We have a Cisco CLI engine where it's data model driven. So any device that looks like a CLI device with a Cisco style CLI, we can render the commands from a data model. So for us to support an unknown CLI kind of device is typically two weeks because we specify it in the data model and the CLI engine renders all the commands that are needed to do the configuration changes. Um, northbound of NCS, we have several UIs. We have one web UI and we have two different flavors of the CLI. You can pick a Cisco style or a Juniper style. We have programmatic interfaces like REST, um, northbound as an MP, typically for reading stats rather than doing config and a netconf northbound interface in order to be integrated to, say, order management systems. If you would like to extend the system with further functionality, we have programmatic APIs for developers and we have script APIs for, for scripters. That was the, the technical overview. Summing up that with the features. Number one here is the most important one. We have a logically representation of the network services in a centralized database. Normally, if you look to a network, where are the services implemented? Well, they are scattered along different configs along the devices. With NCS, you have them centralized at one logical point, so you can reach them from UIs or from APIs. All the states of the network, configuration states and operational states, are represented as a data structure. So you can manipulate data structures rather than understanding the different kinds of interfaces to the devices. You manipulate data structures in the centralized API. Those data structures are defined by semantically rich data models. The data models are written in an ITF standardized language, as I said previously, Yang. So it's an open standard that you can read the specification, you can reuse specifications, load it to NCS, and then you have a formal data model for everything that exists in the network. Mapping services, as I said, mapping a service configuration to corresponding device configurations are tricky. Normally it explodes in thousand lines of code, especially to cater for different kinds of changes. We reduce that to 
a very small definition uh, thanks to the FastMap algorithm. You can do it in templates or in declarative language. They give transactional guarantees including the devices. So as I said, we can have non-transactional devices, transactional devices, different kinds of APIs. By using NCS, the UIs and the APIs, you have one transaction to the network. Either everything happens or nothing. We do have multi-protocol support, NetConf, CLIs, SNMP, REST, both southbound and northbound. What does this give you at the end? Most important, deployment of new services. Since NCS is data model driven, you specify a service, you load it, you have support for a new service. It's a matter of weeks rather than months. So whenever you invent a new service or change your service portfolio, NCS will greatly support that process. Adding new features. The, the way NCS works is that you can plug new features, you can plug new data models, and all of those features will be available across all the northbounds. We don't have any feature lag. We render all the northbound, you plug a feature, and you have support it for it. Typical, we're moving from, from more static networks to dynamic networks where we need to deploy temporary VPNs, we need to increase the bandwidth, we need to increase the quality of service settings for a specific customer. Since NCS supports dynamic reprovisioning, you can turn small knobs in NCS and the network will change accordingly. Since it's a configuration tool, today network engineers do the configuration directly towards the devices and it's, it's very easy to do wrong. You do a config change on one device, you do another change on another device and it's hard to remember the dependencies between them, hard to follow rules. NCS will make sure that all the configuration changes follows the policies. Since we, you work at the service layer, NCS calculates the underlying device configurations, much less errors. Of course, what it leads to at the end is that there is a, not much manual work at the end. NCS automates changes to services, applying new services. It's a single point where you apply the services, much less manual work. So you can, you can scale the network, you can introduce new services, but still keeping the, the same stuff. That's how it works.